bringing you the latest news from Burlington County. This is the Burlington County Times Update with Trish Hartman. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trish Hartman. Here's what you need to know from Burlington County for Tuesday, February 17th. We begin with the snow that fell this morning, snarling the commute. Many schools and businesses were closed or opened late today because of the storm. According to unofficial reports from the National Weather Service, about four to six inches fell in Burlington County overnight into this morning. Before you went anywhere this morning, you probably had to clear snow off your vehicle. Be glad you only had to clear off one or two. The folks at Barlow, Chevrolet and Del Ran had their work cut out for them today. Out here cleaning snow off of these cars, and you ought to come down later this afternoon and get one. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to make the lot safe for our customers. We just want to make things uh, kind of uh, snow free. But it takes a little while to get there when you get a little accumulation like today. Well, you get about eight, ten guys out here. How long do you think it takes, Al? Depends on the snow. Really. Yeah, there you go. But I'd say it takes good, you know, a couple, three hours. Oh, well, these are snow rooms. We keep the car, you know, free of scratches, and we take care of the car again and uh, get it back up front where we can uh, move it along to a good home. Authorities say the bitter cold may have played a role in the death of a homeless man discovered over the weekend. Police say 56-year-old Eugene Powell was found Saturday inside a tent near a Wawa convenience store. State police say his death doesn't appear suspicious and may have been due to exposure. Temperatures dropped to a low of 10 degrees Friday night. Well, jurors are now deciding the fate of three Pemberton Township men on trial for their roles in a deadly West Hampton home invasion. Carrie Green, Tyleek Lewis and Tony Holliday are accused of robbing and killing a 24-year-old man in his home in 2010. Jurors deliberated all day Friday without reaching a verdict. In swimming, the girls from Cherokee High School are getting ready to compete in the state semifinals against Bridgewater Raritan tomorrow. One swimmer in particular is going into the competition with a little more gusto, having just beaten a long-standing record with some personal meaning. Reporter Mark Zamero explains. Some records are made to be broken, but it's not always a family member that has the honor of breaking it. Barbara Hockle Carroll's medley relay school record had stood for more than 30 years. That's until her daughter Sammy finally broke it this winter. So we're, our relay has been the same all year and um, we just swam on Monday against Vineland. Best time we've ever swam and then we find out later that it was, we actually broke a record. And then I, found, I didn't find out until I got home that I broke my mom's record. So that was funny. <laughs> it was the last of her mom's many records that were established at Cherokee High School in the early 80s. Um, I've talk, she's talked about her like summer records and Cherokee records and stuff too. but. I never saw them all because they've been broken by then. When Cherokee first opened, it was a brand new high school, and I was one of the first winter swimmers to go through. So at one time I held a lot of the records, but it was easier back then. Over the years, they've been getting broken, and uh, my son Johnny has two records, and he let me know that he had more records than me. I only had the one left, and now that's gone to my daughter, so yeah. The team of Sammy Carroll, Nikki Broom, Audrey Fanning, and Madison Keene broke the long-standing record of a minute 55.95 against Vineland in a playoff meet. They lowered the mark even further to 155.42 in the South Jersey Championships while capturing a sectional title. I don't know. Um, we have good turns, good splits. We all just know how to cheer each other on and get pumped for the race. And there seem to be no hard feelings between mother and daughter since the record remains in the Carroll household. Um, it was cool because it was my first record and it was her last record, so I don't know, that was cool. I'm thrilled, I actually really am. It's, not, it's kind of poetic because she's a senior, she's my last daughter, so she's got the record now. I'm really actually thrilled, yeah. Sammy and the rest of the Cherokee team compete in the state semifinals tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the College of New Jersey. Chef Shireen is celebrating Mardi Gras Cajun style. She's whipping up a pot of jambalaya in this week's episode of Cook This. Hey guys, I'm Shireen. Today I'm making chicken and andouille sausage jambalaya. So jambalaya is a Cajun dish. Since Mardi Gras is coming up, I figure why not be authentic. I just heated my pot, a little bit of canola oil, and then I'm just going to brown these. So here I have a smoked paprika, a ancho dried chili pepper, and a little cayenne for some heat. I'm going to saute my mirepoix, then add my garlic, a little salt, freshly cracked black pepper, always season in layers. So just until tender. Tomatoes, so I like to use the fire roasted. Use chicken stock, 
And then I'm gonna return the sausage and the chicken, bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer until all the flavors come together for about 20 minutes. And then we'll add the rice the last 15 minutes. And it's ready. Look at that. Watch the entire video and get the recipe at BurlingtonCountyTimes.com. Finally today, call it Fat Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, or Donut Day. It's the day before the beginning of Lent, a sacrificial time for Christians leading up to Easter. Reporter Stephen Jiwon Mall was at one bakery in Burlington City to show us how folks there make delectable donuts to mark the occasion. How do you like your fosh knot? The sweet fried donut is a specialty on Fat Tuesday, the day before the season of Lent begins. JB Bakery in Burlington City has been making them for over a decade. Our customers have been craving Foshnots since the beginning of the year. The Foshnots have gotten so popular, the bakery started selling them last month and won't stop until Easter. If you didn't get out today with all the snow, don't worry. We'll have them Wednesday, we'll have them Thursday throughout the week. Some customers this morning had no idea Foshnots were that famous. I'm very interested to can't wait to try them. They look delicious. Others are regulars and look forward to this day every year. It's uh, just the texture of them, flavor of them, of course. It's just, uh, it's good. It really is. Fosh knots aren't the only hot item today. Mardi Gras king cakes are going fast too. It's the colors and they give you little beads and you know there's a little baby on here. The person who gets the baby has to buy the king cake next year. The king cakes are a New Orleans tradition, while Foshnots started in Europe. The bakery sells them in glazed, powdered, and sugar. These Foshnots are selling quickly, but don't worry. The bakery has made 300 dozen of them. They're open until 8 o'clock tonight, but I'm not wasting any time. Reporting from Burlington City, I'm Stephen Jewamal. Looks good. Thanks, Stephen. You can find these stories and more at BurlingtonCountyTimes.com or follow me on Twitter for your latest local news. I'm Trish Hartman. Thanks for watching and have a great Tuesday.